Cycling reporter Leon McCarran joins me now, uh, cycling from New York to Hong Kong, stopping off in New Zealand and uh, here in Good Living. Hello Leon, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Now this incredible journey, uh, you really are cycling through all of those countries, to all of those places, um, to, and to document uh, social injustices and things like that, is that right? Is that the story behind it? Yeah, pretty much. Um, my background is as a cameraman and not as a cyclist really. I enjoy <laughs> cycling, but it's a... Cycling, I think, is a great way to see the world and you really sort of experience everything as you go through on a bicycle. Mm. And um, one of my passions in life is sustainable transport and sustainability. So um, I thought that was a great way to combine that aspect of the trip with um, what is my first project as a director of a documentary. And um, that's where the idea sort of stemmed from and I decided to cycle... Um, from New York to Hong Kong, which is about 20,000 kilometres. <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking, why would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I think that quite a lot of the time yeah. as well. <laughs> why did you choose that particular way around the world? Well, initially I thought it would be great to cycle all the way around the world. Mm. Um, and I was doing some film internships in New York, so that seemed a logical place to start. And Ireland seemed a logical place to finish, because mm. that's where I'm from. But uh, after I'd been saving for a few years to get this project on the road, and I've had a lot of help from sponsors and donations and things like that, but even so, I didn't have a budget to get all the way around the world, so I thought the good halfway point would be Hong Kong. Mm. And um, the route in between, three places that I knew I really wanted to visit were New York, Hong Kong, and New Zealand. Yay. So I put little crosses <laughs> on the map and then drew some lines in between. And here you are. Yeah. Interesting what Phyllis Brown was saying about manifesting your dreams. And you, and you were saying this took quite a while for you to, <clears> once you had that initial thought, for it to now be uh, happening for you? Yeah, it did. Um, I think it was kind of uh, marrying those two passions in my life of, you know, um, travelling by bicycle and making a documentary. And the theme is people with a passion in life, mm. um, people who invest a lot of their time and energies in something it is that they're very devoted to. And uh, my theory is that when people are that interested in the story they're telling, it'll come across well on camera. Mm. And social documentary is kind of the area I'm really interested in. So I thought it would be great to just follow these stories around the world. And um, the glue that kind of holds them together is my passion of sustainable transport. And uh, that's how I travel between the stories. So um, I kind of had all these things going on in my head and uh, just wasn't quite sure how I would get it off the ground or mm. where I would start from and finish from. And just that first step of selling everything I own and heading out the door on a bicycle <laughs> and literally pedaling across New York and, and on your way out yeah absolutely and it was already it had been quite a big step moving to New York at Christmas time and it was only going to be for six months but I'd already had to sell everything I owned in the mm. UK and then I was in New York doing it again and um, that first day was kind of tough because I sort of knew that if everything went wrong I didn't have anywhere to go back to. <laughs> oh my god, that's incredibly brave. Um, yeah. How have you been finding the people that you've been wanting to um, interview? Has it just been you stumble across them on the way? Yes. Um, a lot of them I just, uh, it's people I meet and mm. um, I think a lot of people have got stories to tell and they don't normally get a platform to tell them. So no, that's right. That's something I'm looking to provide. Um, I also follow up um, leads and things I hear so if I hear about someone in a certain town who's doing something uh, that people are talking about I try and get in touch with them and speak to them about it and um, I also just listen to advice from people everyone mm. always knows someone who has a good story to tell don't they so it must great. be interesting from country to country the different issues that we're all kind of experiencing and I guess some of them will be the same yeah yeah um, and I think that's one of the uh, really exciting things about the documentary is when it's finished, I'm going to be able to look through and start to craft it in the editing process and see how someone in the middle of Cambodia who has a completely different lifestyle to someone in um, downtown New York, but they have stories and um, cultural aspects that are just so similar. Yeah, that's right. And uh, you can just start to draw parallels and, you know, hopefully um, explore a few things along the lines of, you know, humanity and things like that. Brilliant. So when, when it's all finished, Liam, I guess the hope and dream is that it's going to be screened in, um, in theatres across the world? Yeah, um, my personal goal for it is to get it onto the independent film festival circuit. Mm. There's a few great film festivals that have kind of an outdoors edge, like the Banff Mountain Film Festival and Kendall Mountain Film Festival. So those are good ones. And then there's the Sundance Film Festival, um, which is kind of the 
um, goal for all independent filmmakers. So uh, that's my dream. I would also, there's a television, um, get it onto television would be mm. a really good option as well. So once I get back and lock myself in a darkened room to start editing <laughs> it, I'll sort of see where it's best yeah, suited for. Yeah, because it might just, you know, take on legs of its own as well. Exactly, yeah. How's the cycling been? Now, you've cycled through many countries around the world. Has it been dangerous for you at times, literally being on the road? Have you ever feared for your own safety? Yeah, I have. Um, probably not as much as I thought I would. It's, uh, it's one of these things that when I was planning it and researching it, I spoke to a lot of people who'd done similar things and... Um, and quite a lot of people who hadn't done similar things but liked to tell me how dangerous it would be. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Just to set your mind at ease. Yeah, so it's, it is one of those things where um, people always have a, a kind of warning to give you and I think that was good in a way because I've been extra cautious and really haven't come to too much trouble yet. There's been some Let's close... Touch some wood. I know, I know, yeah, I shouldn't be yeah. saying that. There's been some close calls. There's, there's a lot of logging trucks and, you know, huge vehicles out there um, especially across the Midwest of America. And, yeah, I can imagine. Um, some of these windy roads, even in New Zealand, it just gets a little bit hairy sometimes, but so far, so good. Well, good luck, Leon. It's been really lovely to meet you, and you're doing an absolutely incredible thing. Uh, and so good luck with the rest of the journey. I know you're off to Australia tomorrow. Yes, next leg. Now, you can check out Leon um, McCarran as well. He's got his own website, which is leonmccarran.com, so you can follow Leon's journey. Thank you very much.